We're here at the Eden Project in Cornwall to meet some fabulous flora for the first ever Bippers, the Big Picture Plant Awards. These awards showcase the glitzy glamour goddesses, clever communicators, ultimate achievers and vile villains of the plant kingdom. Let's roll out the red carpet. First up is our award for the best communicator. Plants have some surprising ways of communicating with each other, from pollinators and even with their own structures. If you want to reach the giddy heights, take control of your hormones like this royal palm. Or perhaps like the traveller's palm, pollinated by lemurs in Madagascar, you'll choose to orientate yourself with the compass. But can a plant communicate danger or protect itself? Broad beans are known to activate anti-aphid defences when a nearby plant is being attacked and a touch on the sensitive plant triggers a lightning quick electrochemical response closing its leaves. Plants need to attract pollinators and colour, shape and pattern all play their part. Our winner then of the award for best communicator goes to extraordinary lengths to communicate to its pollinators. And our winner is the Titanarum from Western Sumatra. It produces an overpowering stench of rotting flesh that attracts pollinators such as flesh flies and beetles. The stench is so bad that it's often called the corpse flower. It even heats up to body temperature, which means that its flowering is very short-lived. From the beautiful to the bizarre, our next award is for the best costume. The clock vine is pollinated by sunbirds and hummingbirds and is definitely eye-catching. At the other end of the spectrum, the mature baobab tree looks like it's upside down. This hardy species can regrow its bark if stripped bare and is even able to resist drought, fire and termites. Following fashion trends might be highly prized for some people, but there are plants that use mimicry to their advantage, either to attract or restrict particular pollinators. The shape of the beautiful flowers of Heliconia, sometimes called lobster claws, limit pollination to a subset of the hummingbird population. The jade vine has almost luminous green flowers to attract bats at twilight. While the bat drinks nectar from the flowers, the top of its head brushes against the pollen. This is then left on the female part of the next flower the bat visits. However, our winner of the best costume award goes to the tulip. Tulips come in a variety of colours and forms. In the 17th century, the tulip stirred such a passion and frenzy when it arrived into Europe that it sparked tulip mania. Dutch merchantmen coveted the bulbs that became a luxury item, prized for their streaky petals. These are caused by specific viruses in the plant. Our next award is for best adaptation. Whether genetic adaptation from human influence or the ability to survive in hostile or unusual habitats. When we think about survival in extremes, succulent plants such as cacti quickly come to mind. Their modified leaves limit desiccation and their spines provide protection from animals. Bromeliads are epiphytes that adapt to a host of environments, obtaining nutrients from air and rainfall with their scales and hairs helping to trap moisture. Gorse is amazing at adapting to its environment. Its sharp spikes protect it from hungry animals, its flowers attract pollinators with their bright yellow petals and fragrance, and its seeds are ejected when they are ripe. Gorse is also a fire climax plant that regrows from the roots after fire. Lichens are not just one organism, but also a partnership between an alga and fungus. They colonise some of the most inhospitable habitats on Earth, surviving on high mountains and hostile regions such as the Arctic, and can be vitally important sources of food for animals. However, our award for best adaptation goes to none other than rice. Originating in China, rice is the world's number one food crop, with over 400,000 varieties. You could almost say we humans are adapted to exploiting it, and even consider it a symbol of life and fertility. But what makes rice really stand out is the opportunity to address health and malnutrition. Using genetic modification, a golden rice grain has now been produced to carry vitamin A, helping to provide a controversial solution to global famine. Next, our award for best villain. Some are deadly in their own right. Others are only villains because we humans just can't say no. Just like certain humans, some plants need to supplement their diet. Carnivorous plants have developed ingenious ways to lure and trap insects to provide them with essential nutrients. 
The yellow pitcher lures insects inside the flower with sugar that is laced with alkaloids, intoxicating their prey and making escape impossible. They may be toxic, but they still have their uses. Californian buckeye was used by Native Americans to help catch fish. By crushing the toxic seeds and throwing them into a river, hungry fish would die and provide easy pickings. Then there's just a whole host of plants we just can't do without. These oil palms might not be villains, but our appetite for palm oil has led to rainforest destruction and a rise in obesity. However, the award for best villain goes to a plant we just cannot say no to. But it's an award that's certainly unfair. It's not the plant that's the villain, it's us and how we crave it. Sugarcane was perhaps the first mass-produced crop. It's also associated with slave labour. We are often unaware of how much sugar we are consuming and diabetes is now one of the fastest growing health risks of our time. Our final prize is for the Lifetime Achievement Award. So what will it be? A plant that's so useful we cannot imagine life without it, such as tea, coffee, or cork oak tree? Or should our lifetime achiever be a plant that we are prepared to go to extraordinary lengths to harvest, such as the vanilla orchid that requires hand pollination? Maybe we should consider plants that have been around since the dinosaurs walked the earth, such as horsetail restio and flowering plants such as protea. All worthy contenders, but for us we found a plant that is extremely long lived with some specimens over 3,000 years old. Our winner of the Lifetime Achievement Award goes to the humble you. It can tolerate a wide range of conditions, temperature and humidity. The yew has been the focus of myth and legend and its wood was once used to make the English longbow. And despite being largely toxic, it even has medicinal uses. Taxol has been isolated from the yew and is now used as a chemotherapy drug, serving to remind us that beyond what we see on the surface, this plant and all of our worthy winners provide us with so much more than just being green. For more information about plants, visit our website, bigpictureeducation.com.